Why knowledge matters. I was blessed with a home that I could come home to. What a blessing that is for each one of us. You know, the world out there can be real tough and we have to, have to face what we have to face. But if we can come home to a loving home, it, it allows us to go on with our lives. My mother and father were amazing. My dad was a good disciplinarian, but and he, I can see him looking at me and saying, are you a quitter? <laughs> I was not, if I was playing and I just, I quit, he'd look at me and say, oh, are you a quitter? Oh, no, no, I'm not a quitter, you know, that kind of thing. But my mother always found something of humor that she could add to difficult, difficult things that had to be dealt with. Like, for instance, uh, my first two years in school were horrible because I'm dyslexic to this day. I'm still dyslexic. I, 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 at that point, the, the, the alphabet just jumped around on the page for me. I couldn't, um, I couldn't read. So I repeated first grade. Tw uh, well, the t I was in first grade twice and it was, <clears throat> I was the class dummy and I just really was broken as far as my own self-esteem, except at home. At home, it was a different thing. And then when I got into third grade, I had a teacher who saw something in me that the other teacher hadn't seen. So she appointed me as class governor. And as class governor, I got to take what was in our class and present it to our whole student body. And so that put me in a different position. And uh, it was, and the story goes on from there. But it's a <clears throat> uh, awareness that life is, has to be lived and lived in a way that can be uh, workable, but also joyful and livable. You know, you say that uh, your father said to you, well, are you a quitter? And what do you think, why is it that we struggle so much in these days to keep families together? What do you think are the major variables that inhibits people of staying together? What has changed? Well, <clears throat> first of all, it's, I think love is the central focus and love. See, I, I have these, what I call the five L's <clears throat> that kind of give me a little bit of a platform to, to, from which to work. The first two L's are life and love. They can't be separated. It's like when I was pregnant, the, me, the baby and I were one being. When I ate, the baby ate. When I thought the baby, we were one being. But when, so it was one complete unit. But when the baby took its first breath, it became a separate unit. So it was like I was femifesting the first part of the pregnant pregnancy with the baby knowing everything that I was. You know, we were, we were we were one unit, but when as soon as the baby took its first breath, it became a separate unit and it became <clears throat> manifested. It would now manifest itself as a, a true being. So the first two L's ah, are really important to work together. Life and love need to work together. If you were, if you incorporate love into every aspect of your life that you can imagine, you're going to be really, really doing the thing that makes your whole sing, uh, your heart sing. <clears throat> now, the third L is laughter. Laughter without love is, is cruel. It's mean. It makes, breaks families apart. It causes wars. 
but laughter with love is joy and happiness. The fourth one is labor, labor without love. Oh, I have to go to work. Too many diapers, life's too hard. You just drag yourself through one day after another. But labor with love is bliss. It's why you do what you're doing, why I do what I'm doing. It's You work 15 times as hard because you you don't have to drag yourself through it like you do if it, it's without love. But with love, it's bliss. So that's that's the, the fourth. And the fifth uh, L is listening. <clears throat> listening without love is empty sound. Cane, clanging, gong. But listening with love is understanding. So these five L's kind of put a a foundation on or under the philosophy of how love permeates every aspect of our life if we choose to have it do so. But it is a choice. Well, every every day has a new beginning <clears throat> and every day has work to do. So as long as I have a purpose and I have things that I need I feel are important, I have a reason to be alive and live another day. I have a, a friend, a real good friend, and she's she's old, but she's not quite as old as I am. But she called me the other day and she said, Oh, not another day when she woke up. And I don't feel that way. I feel like, oh, yes, another day. And this is what I have to do today. There's work to be done. And as long as I have work that I feel that is doing something to help others and help myself, I better keep moving. Because as soon as you stop moving, it, it stops. So we have to keep moving. And so it, that's my purpose and working through trying to help other people who it's so easy to get stuck, so easy to get so that you feel like you're not doing anything. But if you keep looking for the light, you find it. It's there. It's always there. It's so beautiful. And that's precisely you reveal to the world your six secrets, you know, to a happy and healthy life. And I'm really curious, walk us a little bit through your your uh, past when you were a kid. You grew uh, up. I, did, I with, didn't understand that. Repeat that, please. <clears throat> you you know, just walk us a little bit through your childhood. You know, you had such an interesting childhood. You grew up basically most of the time in India. Your parents are like you now. They were working for the poorest of the poor. Right. And how did this somehow influence you of being now this outstanding person and change maker still up to today and still working? Well, because as I grew up, I <clears throat> I saw not just my parents doing this work, but the Indian people around me, the people that were working with helping other people understand things or just be aware of things, was seen as a little kid. You know, I I had dolls that went to the hospital because... I was a doctor and I needed to take care of my dolls. My sister wouldn't let me take care of her dolls because her dolls didn't get sick, but my dolls did. But it was that kind of a, a awareness from the time I was little that this is, was going to be my job and I had to learn how to do it. And so I stuck around where my, my parents were doing. I watched what my mother did and what my father did. And I thought, yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, I kind of just tracked along behind them. And I'm so glad I did. That's why knowledge matters. 
Make your life a masterpiece. Visit now programs.d-ykm.com.